Using a repricing software for your Amazon business can be a great way to generate more sales, but if you're not careful, you might end up with zero profit. So in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down some of my favorite strategies for using my repricer and actually generating a profit. And especially if you've had experience with prices tanking on your listings on Amazon, this video is gonna be super useful. But if you're new to the channel, my name's Warner Fields from Fields of Profit. I'm a seven figure full-time Amazon seller. And after selling a few million dollars on Amazon, I think I've learned a couple things about using repricers that I want to share with you guys. Because like I said, repricers can be super powerful for your business, but if you're not careful, you'll end up destroying your own profits and the profits of everybody else. But before we jump into those specific strategies, if you want even more free resources to learn how to sell on Amazon, link directly beneath me is our completely free Amazon seller Discord community. It's over 40,000 people in there sharing a ton of free information. Would love to see you in there. Let's go ahead and jump into the video. So before we jump into my computer over here, I wanna give you a quick little intro if you've never used a repricer before. Essentially what it's gonna do is you're gonna be able to go out, you're gonna get the software. I use one called Be Cool. There's a bunch of other softwares on the market that work pretty well also. But at the end of the day, what these softwares do is they monitor all of your listings on Amazon and make sure you're priced competitively according to the rules that you set in your repricer. And so you can see how this would get pretty dangerous if you don't know what you're doing because you're gonna go into a repricer like Be Cool. We're gonna set up a custom rule to do exactly what you want in between, let's say we tell our repricer that we're fine to sell it between 10 and $20. The prices are just going to move all over the place within that range and try to get you as many sales as possible. And so the real danger of using these tools, if you don't know what you're doing, is you're going to end up costing yourself a ton of money in profit, especially because a lot of these repricer tools out of the box will end up tanking listings, especially if you're competing with other people who are doing the same tanking strategies. So let's go ahead and hop into my computer over here and let's break down exactly what I'm talking about. So I've gone ahead and pulled up one of my custom rules within Be Cool right here. This is the repricer that I use. And so as we're creating this rule, there's a couple things that I specifically want to point out. I'm not going to be running through all the filters here. I do have other videos like that on my channel if you're looking to set up a repricer, specifically Be Cool. But I want to just point out a couple things that's going to apply to all repricers to make sure everyone's making more money, right? So the first thing you want to think about on using repricers like this is number one, to make sure you're competing with the buy box price. And what the difference here is the lowest price is not always the buy box price, right? So you go to a listing on Amazon. The buy box is just where it says add to cart. We can click that little yellow button. And a lot of times as Amazon sellers, we're going to be able to capture the buy box without being the lowest price. So don't think that you have to be the lowest price to start getting sales. You just have to be near the buy box to start generating sales. That's a huge thing to remember. And it's going to save you a ton of money, make you a ton of extra profit in your business to make sure you're repricing against the buy box and not the lowest price. And so I'm also, this is a rule that I would use on an FBA listing where we ship it to Amazon. I would choose Amazon FBA and then non-featured FBA as my competitors. A lot of times I wouldn't really consider merch fulfilled sellers as my competitors because those merch fulfilled sellers are going to have to be cheaper than me as an FBA seller. I'm going to get customers that two day prime shipping. The FBM seller might have three day shipping, maybe five day shipping somewhere in that range. And so as FBA sellers, we can command a price premium. So make sure you're pricing against the buy box and the FBA competitors, not the FBM competitors, as long as you're also doing FBA. So then within Be Cool, there's a bunch of other settings that you could also toggle like this, for example. But like I said, we're just focusing on making sure that we're making profit as a group, right? So the next thing we want to think about, and I do not like that this is out of the box. If the guys at Be Cool are watching this video, it would be awesome if we could change the default here. So within a lot of repricers, when you go to like, you know, in this case, this is the rule that it's going to do whenever we don't have the buy box, whenever we're not getting sales, it's going to change our price. It's usually going to lower our price. Sometimes it's going to raise our price so we can go ahead and generate sales at that higher price. But a lot of these repricing tools out of the box, they'll say in this case, this is when the buy box winner is above my minimum price. So let's say the buy box, you know, we can open it up right here as an example as well. But let's say the buy box right now is at $10 and I'm okay selling the item for $9. That was my minimum. So I want to be right there at $10. I want to be right there with that other guy selling the item for $10. A lot of repricing tools are going to default to doing minus one penny. And so it would, it would look something like that right out of the box. And that sounds great, right? Like in theory, if you've never sold on Amazon, sure, I got to be the cheapest guy. But like we just talked about, sales rotate through the buy box. They don't rotate based on the lowest price. Having lower prices does help, but you don't don't have to be the lowest price to generate sales. So make sure that any repricer you're using, make sure you're never, ever, ever undercutting the buy box by one penny. If you want to undercut the buy box, do it. If you can beat somebody else on pricing, like anything like that, if it's your competitive advantage to be cheaper than other people, do it. Absolutely. But never, there's no reason to do minus one penny on the buy box price here. If you want to cut the price, cut it by a dollar, cut it by $2. A lot of times those other people aren't going to follow you. But what happens here is if I have a repricing rule that says minus one penny, I'm going to change it back before I accidentally leave it there because it would cause headache 
mistakes for me. But let's say I have that rule right there that says minus one penny. And then there's one other competitor on my Amazon listing that's also doing minus one penny. That listing is gonna go to my minimum price or his minimum price, whichever is higher, very, very, very fast. Because all they're gonna be doing is, oh, you're at $10, all right, I'm gonna go to 9.99. And then theirs is gonna go, oh, you're at 9.99, all right, I'm gonna go to 9.98. And so on until we hit somebody's minimum. And that's really not even gonna generate a significant amount of sales because reprices are pretty quick. So it's gonna be changing this price every 15 minutes, every 30 minutes or so. And you know, you could fully tank a listing within two days if you aren't careful, especially if you're doing minus one penny on the buy box. So that's massive. If you're a beginner, make sure your repricer is not doing minus one penny. That's like one of the biggest things you can do. And that's also one of the biggest things that kills a lot of listings is beginners who don't know how to use a repricer. So make sure that's not you. So the next thing I wanna talk about to make sure you're actually making money with your repricer is something that seems really simple, really dumb, but can really help you add a ton of extra margin to your business. And this right here is something that you can do within a lot of repricers on Be Cool. It's part of the scheduling feature. I've been playing around with some other more advanced tools, a little more expensive, because you can really go down a lot more granular kind of to the minute and everything like that. But within Be Cool, we can go ahead and schedule this particular repricing rule. This is that one we were looking at earlier. I've got a pretty good amount of listings on this repricing rule right here. And every night at 2 a.m. right here, central time, whatever, it's going to raise my price by 10%. And it's going to keep my price higher by 10% until 4 a.m. So for example, that listing we were already talking about, let's say I'm at $10. My competition is also at $10 and it's just us two, right? So if I at 2 a.m. raise my price by 10%, now I'm at $11. He's at $10. But then if he has a repricing tool similar to Be Cool on here, it's going to say, oh, your competition's at $11. Why are we at $10? We could charge an extra dollar for this item. Let's go ahead and raise our price. And so now just because we decided to randomly raise our price at 2 a.m. when no one else was checking their Amazon, like no one's going to be buying your stuff at 2 a.m. anyway. So there's a really massive benefit to be had from raising your prices through the middle of the night. And then when, you know, when we wake up in the morning in that example, now we're both at $11. My repricing didn't go back down. And now we're just both making an extra dollar every time the item sells. Now let's say that same thing happens. I raise it up to $11. He's at $10. His repricer does not raise it or they're not using a repricer or something like that. At 4 a.m. here in this example, my repricing is going to get re-enabled. It's going to drop it back down directly to where I was. No harm, no foul. I'm back at the same price. And maybe I missed an occasional one sale at 3 a.m. from somebody doing some midnight shopping on Amazon, but I'm not worried about that. I'm way more worried about my profits than that occasional 3 a.m. sale. So raising your prices at night is an awesome way to give those listings a little bit of breathing room so you can wake up in the morning now to $11. And if you really wanted to, once we both raise our prices on that, I'm to $11, then we could get more aggressive with it. We could try to chase them down throughout the day, try to maximize our time in the buy box and then do it all over again. Raise it back up to $11, try to bully them down back to $10, keep making those sales and hog more of those sales for ourselves. And as we're talking about raising prices at night, I also want to emphasize how important it is to just find any excuse to raise your prices, right? So when you're using a repricer, a lot of what it's going to be doing is going, oh, somebody undercut you by a quarter. We need to match them. We're going to cut by a quarter as well. So we can keep making sales. And so the natural tendency of pretty much every repricer is just going to be to gradually creep everyone's prices down. So on top of raising your prices at night, you need to find every excuse possible to go ahead and raise your prices. I've been playing around with some new tools myself to try to raise prices on a much more minute by minute basis. Basis. So during the middle of the day, if I can raise prices for 15 minutes and do it, you know, two or three times a day, maybe I miss out on a couple sales, but we're going to gradually just keep bringing people up and bringing the prices of these listings up just by implementing that simple change and seeing how you can get other people's repricers to react to your own changes. And then if you end up on listings with a bunch of other Amazon sellers who are all repricing up at night, repricing randomly up during the day, that listing is going to be so much healthier long term than those listings where, you know, maybe one guy is pricing up or no one's pricing up. Everyone's just kind of following each other down. So definitely try to get something like that set up in your repricer so we can see who we can start dragging up in our prices throughout the day to start generating more profits for your business. And then on top of all those things that we just talked about, I also want to emphasize how important it is to monitor your pricing as often as you possibly can. While you're a brand new seller, you might have 20 products, 10 products, maybe 20 products sounds like a lot. There's a big advantage to be had on the micro scale of only having a couple products where you can actually go and monitor those listings and see what's going on. You know, maybe you have to cut by 10 cents, but that item is selling a thousand times a month. Like, all those small incremental changes, try to be on top of your repricing as much as possible so you can know when you can squeeze more profit, when you need to cut a little bit to start generating more sales for yourself. And the natural tendency when you use a lot of software is to just trust that the software is doing it all perfectly for you. But unfortunately, that's not the case with pretty much any software. So as you're looking through each listing, I would really encourage you to go in and manually set your minimum and maximum prices on all those items based on kind of like a historical range for that item. And so to show you what I'm talking about, let's just go ahead and jump into my computer over here and I'll show you exactly exactly how I would decide to set a minimum and maximum price on an item to sell on Amazon. 
So I just went ahead and pulled up this item right here. And so when we're looking at this item, let's say we're trying to decide what to put as our minimum and maximum price on this item. I wanted to quickly show you kind of the decision making process here. So pretty much every time I'm going to go ahead and look down here at the Keepa chart. And so from here, I just want to see how the past history of this item has performed and see kind of the maximum price that I can charge and consistently generate sales. And so to do that, the first thing I'll do is I'll just kind of mouse over this. I can also simplify this a little bit. So there's less for us to look at here. And so right here, I'm just interested in the buy box line right so as you can see like right here we're proving our point we were talking about earlier the buy box is actually like 50 cents or so above that new price right there so already we're seeing that you can capture sales when you're not necessarily the cheapest offer so this guy's at 1273 somebody else is at 1234 and so right away we can see that we can capture sales when we're more expensive than the cheaper options and so when I'm looking at an item like this I see that it really very consistently has been selling for like 1237 every now and then it drops down a little bit it even went up to like 1350 or so on an item like this just kind of rough eyeballing it I would initially set my minimum price to like 12 25 or so maybe 12 bucks I also see that occasionally this item goes down to ten dollars but we don't really want to chase those sales unless it becomes necessary and on top of that I also want to show you something that's extra spicy here for those of you guys who are watching the end of the video if you go to data on Keepa and then go to buy box statistics over the last 30 days we can see the average price of the people who won the buy box the most so in this case this guy's got 61% of the buy box over the last 30 days and his average price was 1237 like we were seeing on on that keep a chart this guy is 11 percent, and they were at 12 bucks and so what this tells me is if i price at 12 bucks i'm going to be kind of in line to be competing with these guys who had the buy box pretty much the entire time and so that would mean that we're going to be able to generate a bunch of sales here and on an item like this the pricing discrepancy between these is not really a lot but as you go maybe you're looking at a hundred dollar item you might see that somebody captured 15 percent of the buy box but they were 20 dollars more expensive than someone else so that's where you can really start to use this to really make a bunch of extra money so even in this example like this guy right here has 9%, this guy's got 8%, this guy's got 2%, and they were all over $13. So that tells me over the last 30 days here, there was about 21% of the time that there was a buy box. It would have been eligible for me to get that if I was selling it for $13. So really, if you're looking at an item, you're not sure really where to price it based on the price history, I'd highly recommend going and checking out the buy box statistics to see where other people are winning the buy box. And in this case, if you're profitable at $12.37, throw on your repricer at $12.30, forget about it. This guy's getting good buy box at that price. You're likely to also get good buy box at that price. And then if you don't start generating sales, like we already talked about, you're going to be monitoring this listing and you can go ahead and bump down your price by a dime, 25 cents, whatever you need to do to start generating sales. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and got a ton of value out of it. If you did and you want to go ahead and check out a Be Cool subscription for yourself, go ahead and start repricing and actually making money with it. Link below me, there's going to be an extended free trial of Be Cool. That also helps me out, kind of giving you some game on using your repricer. If you guys could also hit the subscribe button, the like button, all that good stuff helps me out with the algorithm, helps me share value with more Amazon sellers. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, anything like like that i'm happy to answer those down below in the comment section but i really appreciate you guys watching and i will see you next time